Hey girl, hey. I can speak Spanish I Bet you didn't know that I know a different language Hello, how are you? It's hola, como estas? I'd rather know a language than learn boring maps I can speak Spanish, I can speak Spanish, I can speak Spanish, I can speak Spanish Ritmo es mi música, música es mi vida Chica, ven conmigo que te voy a enseñar música Pero tienes que bailar y voy a cantar, cantar. Girl, I know you like this beat, but just hear me out. Pero espera un momento, que estás bailando demasiado como el viento. Tienes que cantar más suave, despacito, porque la canción va un poco despacito. Hey, girl. Guapa, voy a beber un poquito de vino contigo Que se busque la vida tu chico Jorge es su chico, no su nombre Y encima es un vago, un pesado, amargado Venga, vamos a las fiestas, vamos a bailar Que chica eres buena y tienes que descansar Girl, as you can see, I can speak Spanish Hey girl, I can speak Spanish Bet you didn't know that I know a different language Hello, how are you? It's hola, como estas? I'd rather know a language than learn boring maps I can speak Spanish, I can speak Spanish, I can speak Spanish, I can speak Spanish, I can speak Spanish. Money. When you do well, you gotta remind yourself. 
yourself Give yourself a medal Buy some loafers Remind yourself that you're doing very well Loafers, 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 loafers I like rocking loafers cause they make me feel smart Loafers, 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 loafers I like rocking loafers cause they make me feel smart Loafers, 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 loafers I like rocking loafers cause they make me feel smart Loafers, 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 loafers I like rocking loafers cause they make me feel smart Hey, I hope you all are doing well. We are going to go ahead and get started for today. Welcome to CMSC 355. Have y'all, uh, uh <clears throat> hope y'all are doing good. We're going to go ahead and get started. All right. So, quick message as we get started from Mr. Snoop Dogg. Check it out. A message from Big Snoop Deal Double G to all the university students. Yo, syllabus. You gotta do it. You gotta read it. Man, I'm telling you. The more you know, the further you go. Tell them. Snoop Dogg sent you. Syllabus. I know all about it. Catch up so we can have a conversation. Don't be late. Let's go. <laughs> okay, hopefully you get the idea. One thing that I really would like for y'all to do here in the next uh, day or so is read that syllabus. Definitely check out Snoop Dogg's video if you need some more motivation, but in general, I need y'all to check out that syllabus. Um, yeah, it's just got some important info. You need to know what is worth what and things like that. All right, enough of that. Some announcements now. My cool pen. First of all, have you joined Slack? Let me know in the chat. Have you joined Slack? Can you put a check mark besides that? Let me know in the chat. Have you joined Slack? Yeah, there you go. Some of you have. Have you submitted your Friday assignment by submitting an MVP? MP4 video, not a MOV video. I'm talking about MP4. You can put a check by that. Give yourselves a big old check, a big old pat on the back. Excellent. Third announcement. Uh, well, uh, one thing I want to mention. So for these Friday things, we're going to have them like every Friday. So there's no big deal if you like miss one. I'm going to drop probably the lowest, for sure the lowest one, maybe uh, the lowest two of these. So don't worry about it if you screwed it up for the first week. But for, th for this week, you're going to want to do that correctly, okay? And the correct way to do it is to put an MV MP4 into Gradescope. Um, if you submitted for this week, don't... If you submitted a dot move for this week, you cannot resubmit. But don't worry about it too much because as long as you just do the rest of them, you're going to have a great grade on that section, okay? So it's just not, this first one's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. It's probably going to get dropped anyway. Uh, go for MP4. You're going to need to figure out how to do it. Y'all are computer science types. You're trying to do some programming class. Figure it out. There is a MP4 converter out there, even just online ones. So you can just do that online. That's a great, um, so thanks for sharing that. You can also download one. Uh, so yeah, always MP4. 
because that allows my graders to do to grade the 100 submissions and uh, in a timely manner so that you don't get these back like three weeks late. Okay, so the third thing that I want to mention is this. We are going to have a compilation tab. It goes out on Wednesday, and I want to bring to your attention the fact that this might, depending on, on your abilities, might be hard, okay? What this is going to be is this is going to be a task where you are asked to get a C program to compile and, you know, just make on your own computer. Now, it's a C program that runs, that may not sound that hard, but it's a C program that normally runs on Linux. Uh, so you're going to have to do things like install SigWin and all this other stuff. It's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be some work. So I'm going to tell you about it on Wednesday. It's going to be due next Wednesday. You're going to want to start it early because otherwise you're, you might not get it done. It sounds like it's easy, but it's actually going to be hard. All right. Thanks to everybody in the chat. That's great that we're helping each other out. I really like that, uh, that we can help each other out, you know, with finding these tools and stuff like that. Cool. All right. I also want to ask you guys and gals and everybody, have you done any of the following things? Any of the following things? Get in there to Mentimeter. Let me know your boats. We're just, you know, we're still kind of getting to know each other. So I want to know kind of where y'all are at. We're not in person, so I have to use Mentimeter. I hope y'all are enjoying at least a few classes in person this semester. I understand that several classes are in person. Uh, that would be awesome if we could have been in person, but, you know, we'll do our best to get through on this streaming stuff. At least, as y'all can tell, I'm an expert streamer. So it should be a little more fun than uh, whatever those professors did to you last year. All right. So... It looks like out of, it looks like we have about 65 people um, here on the stream, something like that. And it looks like most of you have found a partner. That's great. Completed a Python tutorial. That's great. Or, you know, have some knowledge of Python. Completed a C tutorial. That's great. And not so many of you have downloaded Android Studio. That's something you want to do because we are going to be using that. Um, in the future so if you have done these things which seems like about half of you you are on a really nice track to get an a in this class if you have not done these things you may want to start uh considering your life choices you may want to get on doing these things uh, uh so that you can get back on track for getting the a download android studio the reason that I have that on there, even though I didn't explicitly say to do it, is I find that the students that, for instance, have just heard that we will have an Android Studio thing coming up and have actively downloaded it, those are the students that end up getting A's. So just be a little proactive in what you're doing in this class, and you will probably get it. All right, enough of that. Does anybody... Now this is, we don't have to do this, but does anybody have a solution from Friday that they would like to share? If so, um, please paste your URL of your project into this Minty link. Um, if anybody, and it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be even awesome. If, what I'm gonna do is I would just like to walk through one, um, look at it and see if we can discuss it as a group. So let's see what we got here. Copy this, like we got at least one. See if I can see it. I think I can. Hey, let's look at the code. And here we go. Right. I'm, uh, aha. Okay. Good. Great. Thank you. First of all, Mr. Joe Kearney. Hope I'm saying that right. Thank you so much. Um, can y'all see that code or is it too small for you? Can you see that code or is it too small? Let me know in the chat. It's small, that's what I was. I'm gonna go ahead and 
that up a bit. How about now? Can y'all see that pretty good? Thinking that you can probably see that better. Okay. So. All right. Here's what happened here. It's, gr it's great. This person looks like they solved it in a very straightforward way and not in a bad way. That's good. Um, and they just made it happen probably quickly. So let's look in this play game thing. Here we see first thing being printed out, right? So that's printed out the first time. So this person didn't, um, Mr. Joe decided not to mess with this because it's what's working. We, we're not going to mess with it. Perfectly reasonable choice. Um, and he decided that he would later on in this loop. Now this loop right here goes through every time you like guess and stuff goes through and decides whether you guessed right and all that kind of things. And later on it updates you and tells you like, you know, uh, what your hangman thing looks like. Well, but it didn't do that ahead of time, right? So he decided to put it in right here at the end of this loop. Okay. So he put it in here and what he did, if I understand correctly, is he just, if it's equal to this, print this. If it's equal to this, print this. If it's equal to this, print this, and so on. Does everybody, does anybody have any questions about the solution as to why it works and uh, things like that? Does everybody understand this solution? I'm looking in the chat here. Let me know oh, in the chat. Do you all understand this solution? Okay. <clears throat> Just waiting. It's a little bit of delay, as you know, but it seems like at least a couple of y'all are understanding. All right, great. Can anybody tell me one way? This is a good solution. First of all, no shame in this. Thanks again, Mr. Joe, for sharing. This is a good solution. Can anybody tell me one way that you might want to improve the readability of this solution? Can anybody tell me one way you might want to prove the kind of readability of this solution. Kind of scrolling through it. You can also just follow that link. I'll put the link in the chat here. Aha, I see the answer that I was looking for. There's lots of good answers here, but uh, Hunter has said, place it in a method. So what you could do is you see how this code kind of makes your loop hard to read all at one time. This code that uh, Mr. Joe has put in here, he makes it hard to read all at one time. So what you could do is put all of this code in a function and that might make it uh, easier to read. So that's the thing that I did that you saw, you know, we talked about it last semester, last class. Um, you could also try and do the print line by line thing and, you know, print line one, print line two, print line three and so on. Like I was doing that is perhaps a little complicated and maybe this is actually a better way to go because it's just so easy to read um, but that would be one way to improve it and uh, so I just wanted to go over that real quick for those of you that didn't yeah yeah Joe uh, that was the right thing to do to, f to finish it in 20 minutes that was an excellent choice to finish it fast I'm just saying, like, what would we do if we had infinite time? We might extract it into a method. Good solution. Thanks again, Joe, for being brave and sharing with us. An excellent work in 20 minutes, for sure. All right, cool. So, now, what are we going to talk about this time? Well, what did we talk about last time? Last time we talked about software engineering and how we needed... Um, like what we need software engineering for. And we need it to uh, kind of work together to make software that is bigger than something that we could make just ourselves. That's kind of one of the key things, okay? Uh, now you might think that we could just have no process. Like for instance, maybe we should just think and then 
which is what I'm sure y'all have been doing for your projects for all your years as a computer scientist. Why do you think this doesn't work so well? Anybody tell me why this doesn't work so well? In the chat, typically. <laughs> so communication is an issue, planning is an issue, um, it's too, gets too complex. If someone else needs to <coughs> take over. <laughs> Yep. So these are all good answers. And that is certainly a lot of the things that we're driving about in this class. Um, for instance, it might be important to figure out how do we, how do we split up our work? How do we give like this person, this work, this person, that work, this person, that work. If you don't have any kind of plan and if you don't have things like tasks or stories or, or things like that, then you can't just divide up the work between people. You don't, um, if you don't have kind of a process for figuring out whether you've actually met the customer need for feature X, then you don't really know when you're done. And if you don't have kind of a more organized process, you, you're definitely not going to be thinking about things like security and performance and upgradability and all those kinds of things that you need to do when you're doing software engineering. So. There is a bunch of um, phases in software engineering. Who can tell me what the requirements phase is all about? What is the requirements phase all about? Can anybody tell me in the chat? What do you think that phase is all about right here? Defining the problem and discussing with the client what they require. Yeah, figuring out the problems to be solved is a good way of pointing it, of, of putting it. This is finding the scope of what you need to do. <clears throat> you really, at this point, you're, you're figuring out like the basic idea of what you need to do. How about design? Who can tell me a little bit about design? Of course. Ah, okay, good. We're getting this one y'all I seem to know a little bit less about, but two things I'm seeing that are good here is architecture designing kind of how the system will work and how you'll break it into chunks so the basic architecture of it and then how the actual user interface will look. So both of these are actually designed, right? Like not only is the architecture, how the code will look, that is part of the design, but also how the UI will look, the, the front end will look, that is definitely part of design. All right, I think we all know what implementation is. What is meant by verification and validation? in the chat. Exactly, testing and QA, things like that. And of course, maintenance is like responding to bugs and all that kind of stuff, all the stuff that happens kind of after release. All right, so I think you all understand these phases pretty well. That is good. Um, yeah, the basic idea of software development process is that we want to answer these two fundamental problems down here. Two problems down here. What do we do next and how long should we do it? 
it's really just organizing our work. Um, that is kind of one of the focus of software process models. Now, this is kind of the first um, real software process development model that came out. Uh, who can imagine some things that might, well, this is like doing the things that we just talked about, make the requirements, then design it, then implement it, then test it, and then put it in the maintenance phase. Who can imagine what might go wrong when using this approach? Can anybody imagine what could go wrong here? Go ahead and uh, put it in the chat. Yeah, okay, that's, so one of the things that can go wrong is let's say you get requirements up here. You get a requirement and then you start and you go down this whole phase and you keep on going and you keep on going and you keep on going. Oh, but imagine that this requirement changed like a day after you started. You've already started designing and implementing and verifying and doing maintenance. Um, well, let's say it's changed like a month after you started. You've already done, like, let's say you're here at the time, you've wasted like all this effort because now you got to go back to do this new requirement and that is a real problem. So let me make that clear again. If you have a requirement up here and you start the process, let's say you are like right here and then that requirement changes. So you go to requirement number one, then everything that you've done from here to here Everything you've done here to here is complete garbage and you have to throw it out and you have to just go back to the beginning to start again. That's a problem. All right, good answer so far, y'all. So there are, um, like of course, like kind of what y'all were getting at right here, this is a great quote about the waterfall. It's like exactly what you asked for because you got the requirements at the beginning. It's the exact thing we asked for. We designed it, we implemented it, we tested it, it's great, but it's not what we want anymore because we didn't, first of all, we didn't really know as customers what we wanted exactly. Um, and so when you just touch base with the customers at the beginning and then you never talk to them for months and then you give them something, it's not gonna turn out well. It's really nice because it's simple. Simple is nice, uh, but it mainly fails because the customer is not involved. Um, but that is really the problem. The customer is not involved. You just dump it in the customer's lap at the end, and that never goes very well. Has anybody ever heard of this guy right here, Mr. Fred Brooks? Let me know in the chat. Has anybody ever heard of this guy right here? All right, most people are saying no. Fred Brooks is a Turing and Windwater. Oh, Turing Award winner. Does anybody know what a Turing Award is? Let me know. Do you know what a Turing Award is? All right. It seems like y'all also are not so familiar with the Turing Award. <laughs> Some of you, yeah, so Wang Lee is telling us it is a computer science award. It's basically like the Nobel Prize, but for computer science, it's a big deal. Um, you do it for, you get it for doing fundamental computer science research that helps change the world. And Fred, Bur Fred Brooks was one of the winners. He won in 1999. He won for, for his work, early work on writing the book called No Silver Bullet. That's a book that talks about software projects and why they fail. You know, he has some many famous quotes in there. Early on, of course, 
you do earlier on in computer science, we did end up throwing one implementation away usually, but hopefully we can get away from that now. But he taught us a lot about how to make um, software work. Does anybody, you probably don't know since you don't know Fred Brooks, the most famous thing that he said, but like basically one of the main principles he taught was that if you have a project that's running late in like, let's say if you have a farming project that's running late, like you need to harvest crops, if you add more people, then you will actually finish faster. Fortunately, with a software, um, with software engineering, you add more people to a project that's running late, you often do not complete that software project faster. It's just because of the complexity of the software project. So software is fundamentally, fundamentally more complex than many of the tasks that people do for work. And Fred Brooks was one of the people that told us about that. All right, so let's uh, watch this very quick video about what is waterfall, just so you can have a good handle on what is, what is the waterfall approach. Um, all right, this. Hi, this is Pat with Code Academy. Teeth and tooth so that you have a little bit more to chew on. Let's get started. Waterfall is believed to have been the first process model in software engineering, originating from mechanical engineering. It's a sequential design process, meaning that the earlier phases define subsequent phases. So how is this different than Agile? I'll link a video below that goes into more depth about what Agile is, but they're both trying to solve the same problem, which is how do we turn an idea into a reality? So in today's economy, you're likely going to have to build software as some part of realizing your business dream or any creative endeavor that you have. That's just the world that we live in. But if you find yourself there, uh, how do you start building software? What are the different ways you could go about it? Well, when it comes to Waterfall, one of the main considerations is if your ID needs to work on the first try or risk losing customers, what approach should you take? In this case, this is a good example of why you would need Waterfall because Waterfall emphasizes quality and completeness and testing over getting to market fast and iterating on top of it. Waterfall is different from Agile in a couple of key ways. Agile is about fast iteration and Waterfall is about totality and completeness. Agile is about incorporating the feedback that you get based off of the results that you have, whereas Waterfall is more about being complete and getting it right on the first try. See, the strength of Waterfall is that it is strictly sequential and top-down. That means that there has to be thorough planning and documentation. This lends itself especially well to large projects that need more accurate estimations for approval even just to start. This means that each phase is stronger than the previous phase because you're building off of the knowledge and lessons learned from the last part. Also, it's really hard to start your part of the project if you don't have all the resources that you need. One of the main defining features of Waterfall is scale. Waterfall lends itself especially well to large project sizes, and that's because estimations are needed to be given for large projects. We need to know how many developers to hire and what resources they need to be successful. That means that we have to dive deep into which resources we need to provide, what specializations we need, and who we need to hire for the right job. We also have to take into account any runway for supporting elements like marketing, finance, and legal. On top of that, this likely means that for waterfall projects, there's going to be multiple teams, even multiple teams of teams working on the same project. To do that, they're going to need documentation because different teams working on different parts might not have been involved in the previous phase. They'll often be starting from scratch based off of the lessons that somebody else is handing them. The emphasis here is on sequentiality and completeness. Lastly, when you have multiple teams working on the same application, maintainability becomes really important. And that's where the documentation comes in is because you're often asking developers to maintain something they likely didn't build. So they need to know how to fix it and how it works as a whole. The next defining feature of Waterfall is duration, especially length. Some features take longer to build than others. Some applications take longer to build than others especially when it comes to larger clients like institutions, banks, and government services, they likely have running systems that are working, but they're a little bit antiquated for today's technology. That means that we have to engineer bridge building software for translating and transpiling into the proper format so that we can work with it. Going in sequential order also means time. Some features require to have been built before others can proceed. And this sometimes means going back to a previous stage. 
Sometimes you might encounter things that weren't foreseen in the planning, like bugs, problems, or just general vulnerability, which means that you have to go back and redo certain parts of the application. The third defining feature of Waterfall is quality, because Waterfall is about predictability. While no application can foresee all of the challenges that it will face, some types of applications need to have their pathways anticipated. Things like load times, use rates, vulnerability proofing, and compliance. What happens if the power goes out when someone's using your application? What happens if the internet was dropped? What if the application comes under a malicious attack? For some organizations or companies, it has to work, and there's a number of scenarios that we have to account for, and we can't just tell our users, well, it just doesn't work. This means that Waterfall endorses a robust testing and documentation phase. You can't test it if you don't know what's going on, and so documentation allows you for testing and maintenance. And this dovetails nicely into maintaining, because maintainable means durable. A Waterfall application will likely grow and evolve over its build-out, but that means that it has to evolve to the new challenges it might face. Sometimes that might mean building out entire divisions or sections to support the application. Things like non-technical user support teams that need to be able to fix or address problems in the application without calling the lead developer in the middle of the night. You'll have to build them support applications and interfaces to be able to provide the customer service for your users. So hopefully I've made a pretty strong case for why Waterfall is good, but you might be wondering if it's better than Agile. Waterfall is not necessarily better than Agile because there are just certain types of applications which lend themselves to one or the other. I've seen a lot of teams leverage both aspects of Waterfall and Agile in their day-to-day. -day. Agile is best when the product needs to be small and have frequent updates with the emphasis on getting to the market fast. Waterfall is best when the quality is more important than the speed, with the emphasis on testing and durability of the application. So, what are some good examples of applications which are better for Waterfall or Agile? All right, all right, that's enough. Uh, what I wanted to do is just give you guys and gals a real clear picture of, you know, Agile versus Waterfall. Waterfall, you know, it's not commonly used these days, but it can be, you know, it has some advantages for sure. Um, okay. Now, I wanted to briefly go over the spiral model, kind of from the 80s. It is somewhere, let's say, in between a completely agile approach and a waterfall approach. The idea being that you do essentially prototypes that are like many waterfalls, and then you finally get an operational prototype, okay? So I just wanted to bring this up briefly. This is not super interesting, or you're not gonna be like really tested on this heavily. I just wanted to mention there was like some shifting away from waterfall because the advantages, I mean, the disadvantages were so tough um, that it, you, know, you never kind of revisited the beginning requirements. There was this spiral model that kind of came in between uh, Agile and Waterfall. This kind of has some of the advantages and disadvantages of both Spiral and Waterfall, as you might expect. Now, what I really want to get to uh, is the... So what I want to say here is that, of course, there's no perfect way to organize a project. Projects are tough. Uh, building projects are tough, and they're way less complex because the building doesn't change very much. Um, and so there's going to be no way, no perfect way to do software engineering. Projects, software engineering is way more complicated than building. For so you can look at it this way using a uh, Perez law. A problem has no solution may not be a problem, but a fact. Fact here is that software projects are super complex, and it's a fact not to be solved, but to be coped with over time. Um, so all of this kind of like led up to the introduction of the Agile Manifesto. And this is, you know, there was a ton of, um, ton of projects failing. People were really struggling to make software work at all. And so 
people decided to come up with a set of rules that they had come up with as they worked on successful projects over time in the trenches over the years. Um, and that is kind of what came became the Agile Manifesto. Um, the main tenets of this are that individuals and interactions are valued over processes and tools. Working software, and this is a very important one in my opinion, working software is more important than comprehensive documentation. So emphasis on the software and working software and working test. Um, customer collaboration is a major factor. So talking to the customer, not just once, but all the time to get their feedback and their requirements. Similarly, responding to change over following a plan. Okay, so you don't just get a plan and then follow it, even though that ends up not being what you wanted or what the customer wanted. Respond to change actively as you go through the project. That is four tenets of the Agile man Manifesto. So just uh, drilling down on that a little bit more. Um, the Agile Manifesto <clears throat> goes for continuous improvement versus strict phases. That means it's always trying to con like improve the way it's being executed within your company. Um, a very important thing is that it is kind of iterating every one to two weeks. So instead of these super long, you know, interaction where, you know, you talk to a customer and then six months later you gave something to them. No, every two weeks you're showing something to the customer that is like a working demo or something like that so that they know exactly what you're building. They can give you feedback on it early and often. Another thing that is important in Agile is test-driven development. Maybe not everybody uses test-driven development per se, but there are a lot of tests. There's a lot of tests in Agile, meaning that if you're going to close a task, uh, you have to have a test to kind of prove that you have implemented that feature. Um, so tests are very important in Agile software development because it's kind of how you prove that you're done with that given task. Now, what is Agile software not? Oops. Agile software is not uh, just coding, like being coding cowboys, right? We're not just going to go crazy. Even in our projects in this class, we're not just going to go do whatever we want and call it Agile, right? Agile is actually like relatively rigid way of writing software. So it doesn't mean no planning. It really just means a certain way of planning that is more iterative and happens more often at a smaller scale. It's important to know that it's not just you know, on code. A good way to kind of really drill this into your brain is to look at some of the more extreme forms of Agile, for instance, extreme programming. Um, so their approaches kind of brought up a lot of things like having really short iterations, weeks instead of years, um, bringing up the idea of doing the simplest thing that would work first, right? So if you're gonna implement a feature, do the simplest thing that works and does the job. And then of course, go back and make it more robust and things like that. Um, testing all the time is very important and reviewing code is very important. So short iterations, doing very simple things, testing all the time for every commit you have a test and reviewing all the code. So back in 2001, this was a very kind of controversial idea. You know, the, this is a quote that kind of some of the mainstream people had uh, against Agile back then. In fact, they were worried that it was just a way to legitimize just randomly hacking on code, which it was not. Now we can see, like, if you go to any of the big software shops there, for sure using Agile, um, and like almost everybody's using Agile. It's very structured and very well understood now, but people are gen generally using Agile approaches to software development. 
All right, so if you're going to kind of like contrast plan and document approaches, which is the waterfall approach and somewhat the spiral approach versus agile, the you would answer yes to these questions for plan and document, for waterfall and, and spiral, and no for agile. So like, is a detailed specification required? Yes, absolutely. For the waterfall, no for the agile. Are customers available? Um, unavailable, I'm sorry. For the plan and document, yeah, you don't really interact with customers. No for the agile. And so on, okay? So this is just one way to kind of beat it in your head, the differences between these two. I'm not going to go over these, but if you're kind of um you know still a little curious about the difference between these two you can you can go through these as a thought exercise now let's drill into what is agile um through this guy's definition really quick okay so what's agile well it's helpful to think about what the original problem that Agile was trying to solve is. How do you turn an idea into reality? If you think about it, in today's economy, you're likely going to have to dip your toes into software development if you want to see your idea come to life. Now, there are services out there that are making it easier than ever to not have to depend on teams of software developers just to see something come to fruition. But most likely, the nature of business is such that innovation depends on you doing something that your competitors are not doing or you're doing it better than they're doing. So the rigidity of existing systems can only probably get you so far, so you're likely looking at having to build something on your own. So if you're going to get into software development, how are you going to do it? Well, there's kind of two main ways that it's done today. Day. One is to think about it, what you're trying to do long and hard, uh, gather all the information, do all your research, and then devote some time to developing it and making sure that it works. So this is known as waterfall development. It is probably the most popular form of software development, but you could take a different approach. You could say, well, we're not going to spend so much time in the development phase. What we're going to do is we're going to break up what we're trying to make into the what's known as the minimum viable product, the smallest and simplest version of what we're trying to build, and just put that out there and get feedback and see what works and what doesn't work and involve the business more. And so that is known as agile development. It is not necessarily a opposite way of doing things but it does have a different way of looking at solving the problem of how do you turn an idea into reality using software some people are very passionate about agile development in fact there is even a manifesto that was put out and i've laid it out here the first part of it goes we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it through this work, we have come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following a plan. And the hope with Agile here is that you build a framework that is nimble enough or agile enough to adjust to the changing demands of launching a business. And what we're seeking to do is a deliberate tolerance to learn from our mistakes as we're making them so that we ensure that there is a tighter feedback loop between the developers, the business, the users, and the customers, ultimately resulting in a faster product to market that's more durable, that's more flexible, and ultimately beats our competition because we have a development cycle that supports the ability to change to the challenges that we face. There are some defining features of Agile development you might have heard of, and these are probably the three biggest ones. Agile iterations are known as sprints, so a chunk of time where we work on stuff is known as a sprint. They're typically four to six weeks, but some are as short as a week. Uh, my current company, we have sprints in two weeks. And in a sprint, priorities are translated from business stakeholders into what are known as requirements. And these determine when a task is completed, how long it's supposed to take, and if it's dependent on other tasks or features. The requirements then are minted into tickets, where progress is tracked and commented on, and it's the main way that we can keep track of everything that's happening that's associated with a particular requirement. Once a sprint is coming to the close, priorities are set for the next sprint and determine what everybody's going to be working on at the end, 
The reason that it's done is that sometimes things take longer or shorter than it previously anticipated. So in the spirit of Agile, we're adjusting what we're working on next time instead of constantly falling behind by a plan that's set that's so rigid that can't adapt to the realities of what it means to be on a software development team. Also at the end of the sprint is known as a sprint retrospective, and this is to take stock of what went well and what could have gone better, and a chance for everyone to chime in to let everybody else know that something worked, something didn't, something that we should keep doing. The person that's in charge of all of these sprints is known as a scrum master. Uh, they're called scrum masters because they aren't necessarily project managers. They have a very specific role. So they're a cross between a project manager and more of a stake. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on. I hope that you got the main idea of the Scrum of, of Agile there. You know, there are some key things that we're going to be talking about throughout class, like using issues to track your prog progress, um, having a Scrum Master to help you decide which things to do next and things like that. Um, so I wanted to just to make sure we had time for questions and stuff uh, as I... Sorry, as I summarize, I wanted to summarize real quick. I'm going to summarize here. If you have questions about Agile, go ahead and do it. But um, I wanted to just summarize a little bit of what we learned about today. So we've learned about waterfall approach, right? Waterfall approach is just like the standard traditional way of doing projects. You do requirements, figure out what you want to do. Then you do all your planning. Then you do all your design, you know, and so on and so on. It has some clear disadvantages um, and a few advantages. Most people are doing Agile, which we've talked about the Agile Manifesto um, and how it's built on collaboration with customers, small iterations, and things like that. Um, and that is in contrast to the waterfall approach. So I'm going to answer a few of these questions. Uh, what strategy would you recommend for the projects in this class? So there's two types of projects in this class. One type of project is going to be with Xfig. That's your C project. Um, and you know, you're just not going to need too much process around that. It's really just going to be a single task, like getting the code to compile that you're just going to have to do. I mean, you're that's not really like an iteration. It's kind of outside of a software process because it's not a, a full-blown project, right? It's just you're doing small tasks within the project. Um, however, for your Android app, I would absolutely recommend that you do it in an agile fashion where you create tasks. Everybody works on those tasks, and you have kind of a backlog of what gets to what needs to be done next. So for your Android app, I would definitely recommend that kind of an agile approach. Which do I prefer overall? I mean, generally, so I'm doing a lot of research. I So I use definitely agile approaches because research is more risky than normal kind of software. You know, it changes more often than even normal software. So I definitely have to use agile uh, approach. And I prefer that. So for your projects, your Android projects, the Android app projects, you will be um, team, and it's up to you who the customer is. What I, like if the app is something that I'll that I'd be interested in using, then I could be your customer. If the app is something that your friends in the university are interested in using, they could be your customer. If your app is designed around something that your mom might like, then she can be your customer. You need to figure out who the app is for and then go find your customer because you're going to want to ask them about it a lot. Somebody's asking, will we be completing tutorials on Android Studio? Oh, I'm sorry. Would completing tutorials on Android Studio be helpful or will we learn more about how to work with it? I would recommend uh, completing tutorials on Android Studio. Um, I see these tutorials as kind of like the daily um, worksheets of this class. Like they're not a big deal to go through as long as you go through like, you know, one one little tutorial part per day or something of these. And they will definitely help you class. So if you don't know how to make Android apps yet, you're definitely going to want to be going through those tutorials, 
not all in one day, or, or you can if you want to, but I would just recommend doing like one section of it a day the next week or something. Somebody's asking, should we start working on the app now? Like the idea of what kind of app? Yes, I would recommend trying to figure out the idea for your app now. I wouldn't start working on it yet because we're going to talk about it specifically, how to work on it. Um, but I would start working on just generating the idea. Yes. Which would be used in F InfoSec. So if you have an app that needs to be very secure, you would lean towards a waterfall approach because you're going to ha have more control there. But it really depends on how else it's used. Uh, as I mentioned, most things are done in an agile fashion these days, and agile can be done in a very controlled way. So more likely than not, almost all projects are using kind of an agile approach today. Can I ask a question about not about agile, but class related? Absolutely. Do I have any examples of previous apps that were successful? Uh, yeah, I can't. Trying to think back, people make. I don't have any off the top of my head, but um, one we did last semester, which was fun. This was one that I gave to them. It was like a mini golf scoring app. That was pretty fun. Um, so something like you know maybe like a phase ten scoring app, or it could be any kind of. Uh, a lot of times when you play board games or cards, you need to keep score, like keeping score in an app. That's kind of a fun, easy app for people to do. If you don't have a partner by next, by Wednesday, I can help you find a partner, but you really just need to find a partner in Slack. Um, just go to Slack and find a partner. The project on Wednesday, I'll tell you about on Wednesday, but it'll basically be compiling a C project to get it work on your own computer. Office hours are located. You can come online or you can come directly to my room. I'm in 2322, the Engineering Research Building. Uh, 2322 in the Engineering Research Building. Uh, if I'm not at my desk, just you know, slack me and because uh, I may be in the lab, but can find me if you're around uh problem something like tic-tac-toe or guess a number uh it could be but it would so if it was tic-tac-toe it would have to be like a decent like a nice version of tic-tac-toe because that's doesn't sound so hard um so it could be tic-tac-toe but it have to be a good version like it can't be too simple Yeah, the more complicated your app is, the higher score you have. Yeah, absolutely. But not just for the sake of being complicated. You want the app to serve some purpose. You want the code to, you know, we want it to be big enough to be interesting, but not don't make it overly complicated for no reason. You want it to be easy to use and stuff like that. So really just it, the app needs to have some purpose and it does it needs to be more than just a toy app. Can we work on a team for project one? Yes, you will definitely be working on teams for all projects. So, yes. All right, so again, just to reiterate, um, by the end of today, you should know that Agile is how most projects are done, and you should know kind of the, what the basics of the agile manifesto are you can look back in the slides if you don't know what those are and should have some kind of feel for what is the difference between agile and waterfall we're not going to be using waterfall we're going to be mainly using agile i uh, just wanted you to know waterfall because it's kind of uh, important historically somebody's asking does the app need to be pretty or can it be normal code screen uh, the app needs to look decent it doesn't need to be super artistic because maybe we don't have an artist on our team, but it needs to look solid. Um, even a non-artist person can make an app that looks uh, solid. So you, you want it to look something that is professional. Oh, 
All right. I think we're out of questions for today. We're definitely out of time for class. So I will see y'all on Wednesday. Uh, teams should be two people. And I will see y'all on Wednesday. Preferred language for the app, Android app is Java. See y'all on Wednesday.